Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so I have a video request today. Um, I think I'm saying her name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, Nevaeh. Um, she wanted to see uh, some of the test results and some of the cost uh, associated with my MCS or MCAS uh, diagnosis. <clears throat> I apologize, I'm a little hoarse. I had an exposure earlier. So I'll try to push through the video the best I can and uh, hopefully make a lot of sense. Um, first thing I do, I'll cut the car off. Might be a little noise in the background. Um, it's kind of hard to sum up the actual cost. It would be, I would say from the very start, I would say over $50,000, if not more. And the reason why I say that is Early on, they didn't know what I had. So, the early on test, well, I'll start with this. I'd seen an allergist, and she gave me allergy pills, you know, the basic Lane Jane stuff, started from our antihistamines, hydroxyzine, you know, fairly inexpensive stuff, you know, $20, $40, you know, your basic kind of run of the mill stuff. And uh, I wasn't seeing any relief with any of that. So, um, about four or five months into the problems I was having when MCS hit me full blown, uh, December the 8th of 2019, um, I started having trouble. It was right around March or April of 2020. And, um, when I started having trouble, uh, I had severe acid reflux, throwing up, um, my stomach wasn't digesting my food. I had no re I had no idea why. I mean, it was no, no really explanation. It was just, you know, bizarre symptoms. So the, I seen a, I'd seen an allergist first at Wake Forest Baptist Hospital. They're supposed to be one of the, the best in the world. Uh, the first bill was $1,080 for that 20 minute visit. She didn't believe a word I said. She didn't believe, um, you know, anything about chemical sensitivity, uh, none of that. She sent me to a vocal cord dysfunction specialist. Um, they run some tests. Uh, I come up and come back negative. I know it wasn't vocal cord dysfunction. That visit was like a thousand and some dollars. Um, the test and everything, they want me to do some breathing exercise, etc. etc. I uh, didn't see any relief with really any of that, it was just temporary. Um, the next thing was I'd seen, well, it was before that, I'd seen Dr. Rogoski and he mentioned MCS to me, which I wasn't on board with that because I've never been really chemically sensitive my whole life. It just come out of nowhere. It just it progressed from June of nineteen and it hit me full blown uh December of nineteen. So I couldn't pinpoint why I was sensitive so much. You know, it wasn't like a slow progression that that made sense in my mind to it the explanation being MCS. So I was the one that was against the you know the MCS diagnosis. When I started having stomach issues I'd seen uh Doctor Stephen uh, Brian Clayton at Wake Forest, one of the best around. Uh, he's a GI specialist. They had done a, uh, the first thing they done, it was like a swallow test to see if my esophagus was working correctly. It was not. I think that procedure was five or six grand. Luckily, I had insurance. Um, I, had a, I had a chest CT right after this had started because that was my main complaint i couldn't breathe you know uh, my chest was bothering etc cetera, etc cetera. i'd seen a pulmonologist he blamed it on asthma i know it wasn't asthma um this was kind of the first test result that i had um i want to show you it was a ct this was in december of 19 this was a few days after it started and it's probably backwards on the video, so I'll read it off to you. It says, central bronchial cuffing, uh, sheath thickening, thickening, and mild bronchitis. The bronchitis I kept the first seven months of the condition. Because 
I wasn't eliminating my exposure, so I had no, you know, I had no way to pinpoint it. Um, as it progressed, like I said, I got in and see a GI, and basically I got to where I was throwing up, you know, the several odd things, you know, is my hair was falling out uh, early on. I can show you a picture of that. Uh, this was, this was pretty much at my worst. My hair was falling out. I mean, it was falling out way back here. And my skin was changing colors. My coworkers, you know, right before I had to quit work, they started noticing changes. And it was like, something's wrong, you know. Even uh, even management, you know, told me, you know, something's not, you don't look right or you don't look good, you know. And I worked to the very end. I worked as long as I possibly could. I mean, uh, my coworkers and stuff, they pretty much almost had to, uh, help carry me out toward that last little bit. Uh, I love working. I miss working every day If there was a way that I could return, you know doing something I would love to do that um, But back to the story um, The next thing I had I had uh, uh, They told me that because my food was hanging I had you know, I had some inflammation in my esophagus so they told me to do a, a EGD with an esophagus stretch I had that done, and that was about, I think they charged the insurance, it was like $18,000, and uh, that helped me a little bit, but I started getting aspiration pneumonia. My stomach contents was coming up. They put me on two Prilosex a day, then they upped it to four Prilosex a day, then they it went from that, then it went from, they gave me Famotidine, it's an H2 blocker. Um, it's basically a generic Pepsi is what it is. But it also acts as a type of antihistamine. I didn't know that at the time. I'd seen help with the flamotidine, but I didn't see help with the Prilosec so much, but even though I still use both. Um, so he done a gastric empty study. I think it was like three or four grand. My stomach function, this was the result of it. My stomach function was, da, 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 da. it says findings consistent with mild to delay gastric emptying. And it also says solid gastric percentages. Anyway, it's kind of a long explanation to it, but basically to break it down is they make you drink an inshore and they see how fast your body processes the uh, what you drank with the dye, and basically mine was like 30%, 35%, which was very unusual for someone my age. They said it was, my stomach function was like that of a, you know, 75 or 80 year old man in poor health, but there's some of that results. Um, I, I requested a bronchoscopy, and it's basically where they run tubes in your lungs, and they look at your lungs, I thought, well, maybe I got mold in my lungs because I was reminded that mold at home, you know, and my primary symptom was cough and I couldn't breathe. So basically I had like, it was like hives in my lungs. It was a lot of irritation, swelling, redness. Structurally it was nothing wrong, but I had a lot of irritation. My nasal septums was uh, swole. Um, the EGD revealed, it says mild uh, chronic gastritis and also squamous epithelial increased number uh, reactor squamous epithelial 18 per feel, which means uh, it was consistent with an allergic reaction in my stomach. They said my I had stomach inflammation, uh, all that stuff. I had um, my IgE, it was 262. Uh, I want to put all the pieces of the puzzle together if you hadn't figured it out. So, with Gulf War syndrome or mast cell activation syndrome, one of the studies shows that nasal septum swelling that's uncontrolled is a consistent finding with uh, those two conditions, and they kind of goes hand in hand because Gulf War syndrome uh, is linked to high mast cells. So let's just use the term mast cell activation syndrome, but that's basically what I have. Also, the delay in gastric emptying is also consistent with mast cell activation syndrome because what happens is your foods that you're eating 
you start reacting to them and your 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 stomach it doesn't want to digest it because it's the chemicals in the food is poisoning you so your stomach hits a point to where it doesn't want to digest your food it's it's basically your organs are shutting down that's what's happened and that's what was happening with me is because because i was i didn't know the diet protocols i didn't know you know what to eat i didn't know the inflammatory foods like the cheese the bread you know the sugars i still you know i was i didn't know that i had mcas or multiple chemical sensitivity so i hope i was make sense but so i had increased numbers of um uh, eosinophils um in my stomach i had stomach inflammation like an allergic reaction i had inflammation in my bronchial tubes from exposures that I didn't know that I was exposing myself things to. I had increased IgE. Uh, even my esophagus, even my esophagus was uh, basically failing because the muscle had give up because I'd had so much stomach acid. My, my stomach was regurgitating all of the food I was taking in because I still was eating regular at the time. I was eating pizza. I was eating, you know, just bread, you know, just like a regular guy. I was just eating regular stuff. And I couldn't understand, you know, no matter how much antacid I took or how much they give me, I still wasn't getting better. So I knew something wasn't right and I kept blaming it on, okay, well, it's your diet, it's your diet, you know. And I ended up in the process, I ended up losing like 50 pounds when I went through this process. I'll show you what I looked like before I got sick. Um, I was a pretty stout young man. You know, I'm not saying I'm no power lifter or nothing like that. I'm not bragging. But, you know, when it comes to picking up 200, 250 pounds off the floor, I could do it. This was before I got sick. You know, I had some I had some arms on me, you know. You know, I'm not bragging or nothing like that. I'm not uh, trying to impress nobody, but... Um, and I'll give you a picture of after going through all this with the stomach issues and everything. Sorry, it's so blurry. But that's down like 55 pounds from, from before I got sick to after I got sick. So going through all this stuff. Let's see, let me find where I was at because I lost my place. Um, when I had joined the website, they talked about things like environmental load, et cetera, et cetera. When I'd seen Stephanie McCarter, which is a functional medicine doctor, I told her what I had went through and things I'd had done and stuff. And I kind of gave her a brief and an overview and, and she knew exactly what I was talking about. And, you know, I told her, I said, it's like my, it's like my organs are shutting down. You know, my organs is, they're just not working right. And, you know, it's like everything I eat, I get sick. You know, I eat pizza, I get sick. I eat bread, I get sick. You know, I eat bacon, and, you know, just... And I didn't contribute to MCS or anything like that, but I started reading the uh, people's stories on the MCS website a year later. Um, I had a strata procedure to control stomach acid. That's basically where they give you uh, radiation to your esophagus, and it thickens that muscle to keep the contents of your stomach from coming up because I kept getting uh, aspiration pneumonia. And uh, let's see where I was at. I'm going to bring up some more of my test results. Um, if you look up Gulf War Syndrome, you know, it says depleted uranium, one of the main causes. And if you remember my last video, one of the tests that uh, Stephanie McCarter ordered, I told her what i had been through and I told her I said nothing was helping me. I was taking a ridiculous amount of antacids, you know, they done two stomach surgeries. I still was regurgitating my food. I was throwing up every day. So when I talked to uh, Stephanie, uh, she recommended two tests. It was a heavy metal top screen. Um, basically how that works is they send you a test kit in the mail from Great Plains Laboratory. And they take a little snippet of your hair and they also take uh it's it's a urine test they do it's for mycotoxins it's for mold that was the two tests that i started with when i got in functional medicine this was this was like a year of seeing this was after a year of seeing regular doctors it wasn't it wasn't helping me you know they were just throwing medicines at me and they wasn't doing any really any good 
uh, other than the famotidine and, you know, I was taking cough medicine and all that. And I still was coughing myself to death. I had convinced myself in my mind, well, my cough's from my stomach acid, but uh, it never did make sense because no matter how, you know, different I ate or anything or the antiacids, it, nothing changed. So anyway, back to the, uh, back to the story or the conclusion of what I'm talking about. She had ordered a uh, uranium test, or not a uranium test, but a heavy metal toxic test, and there was there was the results. I was high in uh, uranium. I was high in nickel. I was high in titanium. I was high in a little bit high in aluminum. Aluminum, and I was high in magnesium. Now, uranium is linked toward mast cell activation syndrome, aka go four syndrome. So that made perfect sense. Um, so, you know, that was pretty much, that was the founding moment, you know, you got chemically poisoned. And where did I, where did this happen? It happened at work because there was a material that I worked in. It was called Amasteel and the main ingredients was like nickel, uh, magnesium. The uranium probably come off uh, the rust inhibitor that I got on me. Um, I want to show you a few more uh, pictures. I don't know if I can find them or not, but so this is your environmental load. It comes from different things. You know, it comes from stress. It comes from exposures. It comes from your allergies, uh, several different things. And I know this wasn't my regular allergies, uh, but anyway, so after that, it all started to make sense and I started, you know, I done her, uh, diet, you know, no cheese, uh, no dairy, you know, inflammatory foods, you know, no processed. And after that, my throwing up, uh, you know, my stomach, uh, delay that I was having on my food, cause at my worst I could eat and 12 hours later I could throw up and it's like my food hadn't digested at all so when i got away from like i said sugars inflammatories all, all inflammatory foods your breads all that stuff like i explained in my other video it started uh it started clearing up and uh in this process of it uh clearing up it all started to make sense i'm like okay i got delayed stomach empty you know i got that uh, gastroparesis, I believe, is the correct terminology. Uh, that's linked to mast cell activation syndrome. I have the high levels of uranium. You know, that's linked to Gulf War syndrome. It was so many different things, and uh, I had I done a genetic test, like the MTHRF, if I'm saying that correctly. I done that. I was positive for that, so I had the two genetic mutations that my body doesn't detox properly. Um, the hair test. And the mycotoxin test, those was about, I think I was about six, seven hundred dollars between the two. The stomach surgery I had that I probably didn't need, that was probably twenty grand. Um, all the stuff prior to functional medicine, the insurance pretty well covered it. Anything after that, the functional medicine wise, excuse me, uh, it wasn't covered, so I had to pay out of pocket. Which, you know, for what I paid, if I knew from the beginning what I knew then, you know, from the very start, I would have just went with functional medicine. I would have skipped, you know, all the mainstream doctors. But another thing uh, that made sense was the famotidine. See, I didn't know this until I joined the website. Famotidine's an H2 blocker. I was taking it for stomach acid, but it was also, it's also used in mast cell activation syndrome. So there were so many hints there that kind of led me the road to mcs or mcas and uh, my allergist let's see i'm trying to find a picture uh, my allergist officially diagnosed me here's the diagnosis paper you probably won't be able to read it. it's probably backwards but it says diagnosed with multiple chemical sensitivity and mcas as far as i know According to that paper, she felt like it was enough evidence to diagnose me based on my symptoms and my reactions and 
all the things I've had done, all the testing, the high IgE. I've, you know, I've been, I take Zolar, those shots for $1,080 a month. Um, luckily, it's covered by the insurance. I'm losing my insurance this month. Um, something else I want to show you guys before I wrap the video up. And let's see. I didn't screenshot it right away because I've already showed this quite a bit, so I didn't know if it was if it was worth showing you. But when I work for the manufacturer I work for, I had terrible hives all over my hands and my arms and all that stuff. Um, it went away after I quit that manufacturer, but I got more and more sensitive to the things that I worked in. Let's see, it's probably under my messenger file. Let me look at it real fast. So I apologize that the video is kind of dragging on, but I wanted to go through it thoroughly and kind of show you guys, you know, it's, I'm a product of elimination kind of guy. You know, I go from one thing to another thing to another thing, but here's some pictures. So, there was me at my worst. There's some hives. Um, this is at the manufacturer I worked at. I worked in acid baths, caustic sodas. Uh, the air quality was so bad for the manufacturer that I worked for, the filing cabinets would rust every two or three years. It would eat holes in the concrete. There was four people that got cancer the year that I got sick. One had lung cancer, another had lymph cancer. Of course, we was told, oh, it's safe, you know, it's, you know, it's, they, they'll tell you anything. A manufacturer will tell you anything. But I got all oddies, you know, that I got it from, uh, from the manufacturer I worked at. Uh, I have not pursued a, you know, legal action or anything like that because I'm just, you know, my main thing is I want to get I want to get well, you know, I don't, I'm not looking for animosity or anything like that, you know, I just want to, my focus is I want to get well, you know, even though that this is financially ruining me and all the tests and all the doctor's trips and all these different things I've done and medicines and, uh, you know, healthy eating, organic eating, you know, all this stuff's very very expensive i mean extremely extremely expensive there's another picture maybe my legs would break out i just get a drop a rust inhibitor on me but i didn't start out that way over time I'd, as it built up my body i developed you know more and more sensitivity to it and i and i you know i went to the hr manager and i i told him i was like you know it's i'm getting allergic to this stuff you know i need to i need to get moved you know it's it this is this is damaging. This is damaging my body. You know, my hair's falling out. You know, my coworkers is, is talking about, you know, my skin's changing color. You know, this is, <laughs> this is a, some kind of physical reaction. And, uh, my boss would not work with me, the HR person. I quit there in June of 2019. I started coughing up blood. And, um, I put some pictures on the MCS website, and there's some pictures on the, uh, that I've sent some of y'all, but I don't, I'm going to post those as well on my next video, but, uh, but yeah, um, going through all this, they wouldn't, they wouldn't work with me, they wouldn't move me, I don't know if they was a strategy to get rid of me, I had four years in, I didn't hardly miss time, I was a great worker, I didn't bother nobody. Uh, they didn't, they had an 80% turnover rate, so they like getting rid of people after two years. Uh, they just over childish things. I got a verbal overwriting uh, in blue ink instead of black ink on my production sheet. Uh, it was just a terrible place to work. Um, I give them three years too long. Maybe if I hadn't even worked there, maybe I wouldn't even had MCS. But, but anyway, all my medical bills, to answer your question, um, uh, Miss Lo Lopez, if I'm saying your name correctly, <sighs> start to finish. Uh, this has financially ruined me and uh, physically about destroyed me and 2019 about killed me. 
uh, I would say all together, I'd say 40, 50 grand easy uh, things that was, I, and as a matter of fact, I'd say $100,000 if I had to count, you know, I, I, you know, buy new clothes and, you know, I essentially clean my car because I, I was afraid my car was contaminated with things that I worked in, um, uh, medicines, um, you know, I remodeled a home that still didn't work. You know, if I hadn't got sick, I probably would have been able to move in it and do this fine. Um, the test results, I mean, I still like to have, you know, the Lyme's test and I like to do the microtoxin test again. It showed up clean. The heavy metal test, it was, it was, it was pretty nasty. And a lot of people, they say it's at a heavy metal test, you know, it's not accurate, you know, but it's a funny thing. After two years, everything that I worked in, it was high. So, you know, it seemed to pick it up. And there's a lot of people that cause, uh, you know, BS on detox. But <sighs> Dr. Matos, my MCAS doctor, he said when you when you when you develop these conditions, your body gets contaminated. Okay, like my lungs got, they took the blunt of the hit. They were the ones that got the most contaminated because of the magnesium dust and everything. That was the organ that got hit the hardest. That's where mine primarily was, was respiratory. So what happens is you breathe that stuff in, your body doesn't detox it, your body starts basically just kind of attacking itself like autoimmune. And that's why prednisone usually helps um, a lot of MCAS people because it, it turns off the mechanisms uh, like an autoimmune disease, like some people, it's got an autoimmune disease. They take, uh, like, ma let's say, maso <clears throat> masocytosis, if I'm saying that correctly, like that condition, or let's say a rheumatoid arthritis. You know, some some autoimmune conditions, you know, that's severe. They give them chemotherapy because it shuts their immune system down. So your immune system attacks itself, you know, or your immune system attacks its own tissues. When you're contaminated. With heavy metals and stuff or microtoxins your body releases all this you know cortisol and stuff from your liver and it just your tissues is attacking that's where when you're around a, you know a small exposure or something like that that's why you you go in these coffin fits and stuff because your your toxic load is filled up and only takes it just that little bit you know to, to go over the edge and you, you got this hypersensitivity that you develop from the barrels full and it can't take any more, and that's why I'm a big believer in detox, because the more empty that barrel is, the more your hypersensitivities is going to go down, you know, the better, the better you're going to feel, the less you're going to cough, you know, if, if, if it's, it's the same way with your skin, you know, if you're, if you got a scab, and you, you know, if you keep digging and digging and digging at it, you know, over time, it's just going to get more and more sensitive, but if you, if you leave the scab alone, it's going to heal up, well, it's, it's the same way with, uh, you know with this is if you keep being around things you know that's exposing yourself you keep adding to that load you're going to get more and more sensitive your body's had enough but back to the point what my mcas doctor was telling me he said that when your body hits this limit your body kind of starts attacking itself you know it starts sending cytokines and you know etc etc it might be eosinophils you know it's different mechanisms you know or it might be the mast cells if you got mast cell activation but those mast cells go to the damaged site and they try to get rid of this but because you lack the genes to detox it or you don't have you know the proper things in your body to help you detox or you're not you know you're not doing the right things your body just keeps you know, that's where the inflammation cycle comes from. It's, it's, your body keeps sending those cells and it's basically, uh, what Al just told me one time, the analogy he used, uh, your body's nuking the city to kill the sniper. That's what's happening is your body's basically just kind of destroying itself over, over, over it being contaminated with things. But, you know, it's, some people, you know, they never count it. You know, it's they work in mold seven, eight days a week. They work in this stuff to, you know, it don't come out as, uh, you know, MCS with people. Some people, you know, it might be cancer. You know, it doesn't bother them. You know, I, I've got, you know, 
people, good friends I know, you know, they worked in a manufacturer for 30 years around acid. They was fine, you know, they developed COPD or something, but then all of a sudden, you know, pow, you know, they drop over with cancer, you know, at 50 or 60 years old. Well, that was the reason why is because they, their body detoxed it enough to where, you know, they didn't develop MCS, but it was enough contamination in the body that it caused a genetic mutation and then that led to cancer cell and and then boom you know the person was dead you know that it's it's all about the dollar who can make money that's what it's about and the medical community is not going to understand you know the mainstream they're not going to associated with anything the reason why is because if they did the country would go bankrupt but i hope this answers your questions i like the video request uh i hope they keep coming um i want to help you guys out much as i can from my understanding my experience this is not medical advice this is for entertainment purposes only y'all have a god blessed day and hopefully we'll be seeing some more videos here soon have a good one.